Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Takes. And if you're wondering why this is not a Star Wars Celebration Edition, it is because we are recording it the night before and we'll discuss that news at a later point because you won't be around tomorrow to discuss it then. No, presently I'm not here. No, no you're not. No. When this goes live, you will not be here. You will be working. Yep, I work. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes you do. Go figure. All right, well, anyway, let's get to the news. All right, we're going to start off by talking about our favorite topic, The Mandalorian. Simon Cassianides discussed his character, Axe Wolves, the return of Axe Wolves. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. He's not really a do-as-you're-told kind of character as we were seeing during this episode. I like that we did get a little little characterization for the character. A little bit at the start there, yeah. Mm -hmm, because he didn't do much in the season he was in in season two he kind of stood there and he kind of stood there yep. yep yep but now he has spoken i have spoken <laughs> oh that's terrible yes. when Bo and him meet up again for the first time in a while he kind of has this to say about his character when you meet him he's absolutely disillusioned in terms of it's money it's fine this is our future now but i don't think he's very happy about it so he wants to be a believer well, he's not happy with the life they have. Well, sure, but I mean, it sounds like he's not happy in terms of... I mean, some people like going around Merc and making money and... But they're proud Mandalorians, the and it feels like... Maybe he feels like they're just dredging well, the bottom of the barrel to survive rather than being the proud warriors they are. That's what I'm saying. He wants to be a believer in Mandalore and Mandalorians. Hmm. I mean, that's what I get out of that. We know that Din and Bo want Axe Wolves and the rest of them to kind of join up. We want to reunite the Mandalorians into one great civilization once again. But Wolves is kind of an angry man. He's not He's not been happy for a while, I would say. I don't think any of Bo's people have been happy for a long time, probably since the Purge. Well, I mean, that would suck, right? Imagine if Earth got glassed and you're, we're in tribes across the galaxy. Sounds like Battlestar Galactica mm. or something. <laughs> Even though that's not exactly how that goes. He says, I imagined he's lost a lot of loved ones during the Purge and uses his pain to fuel his attacks. He's a natural leader in his own right, evident in the army of Mandalorians who've now chosen to follow him as mercenaries rather than stay loyal to Bo-Katan. It's also evident in how fierce his and Bo's fight is. They don't hold back. Something Katie and I were passionate about. Yeah, that was a good fight. I liked it. Mm -hmm. A lot of Mandalorian tricks and tactics. Absolutely. It was exciting to watch because they do use the full arsenal, yeah. though non-lethal. Well, I mean... They weren't shooting each other with their guns full on. Well, I mean, they're shooting fire at each other and doing other crazy stuff. Things could go wrong. He only shoots fire because he knows she can block it. Uh, I'm not <laughs> I don't know. so sure that's why you shoot fire at someone, because you know <laughs> they're going to block it. All right. He goes on to say, I mean, we're flying all over the set. It's brutal. There's jetpacks. We're in the air. We're colliding into the ship. It's no small fight, and we each hold our ground until the end. There's one scene where I squarely punch her across the face. She falls off the wing of a ship, and as she's falling, she shoots a grappling cable, which wraps around my neck. It pulls me down, and I smack the wing and go flipping over. When you see people do that a couple of times, you think, yeah, I'm never going to tell people that I did that stunt. Nope, there's no chance I'm going to do that. That's pretty hardcore. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah, and he's giving his stunt people all the credit. Yeah, it's good to see. I think stunt people on the show deserve plenty of credit. Absolutely. Or any show. And I do love that they all kind of go, hey, my stunt people are amazing. No, my stunt people are amazing. No, mine. They're going to fight over the stunt people. That would be <laughs> ironic. Right, we know that these two factions are going to come together under one leader, we hope. The armor and her people follow the way, and they're very serious about it, more so than Axe, Wolf, and the followers on that side. This is why the armor said that Bo was going to be a bridge between the groups of Mandalorians. But maybe their differences are going to be too significant to unite. Who knows? But one thing is said, Simon says, ha ha ha, the big question is how Axe will overcome his disdain for those that do walk the way who he calls zealots. They need all the help they can get and must unite, but Axe has a pretty big personality and always makes his thoughts plain. Well, I think Gideon is going to be the thing they unite against, right? Common enemy? I think they all hate Gideon. Yeah. Right across the board. Yeah, why would anybody like him? Mm. Other than the Mandalorians who are loyal to the Empire, who and are maybe loyal to Gideon right now? 
And why would bo group of Mandalorians reject help? Even if they are like, well, you guys didn't suffer the way we did. Why, are they really going to reject help? I don't think so. For reclaiming Mandal? I don't think so. One thing, John and Dave actually have chimed in about the backstory behind why these factions are so different. They said, Axe Wolves was raised on the planet of Mandalore, unlike Din Djarin in the armor who were raised on Mandalore's moon, where the way was followed to the letter. Wolves represents modern Mandalorian society, and as such, seldom wears his helmet. Those new schoolers. Darn new school. <laughs> Don't respect the old school ways. Apparently not. Maybe they'll come to respect them. I think we're going to see some cooperation here eventually. Well, once Bo gets on that mythosaur and the mythosaur says, everyone should wear their helmets, it'll all be over. If it says that, that would be very freaky. <laughs> if it speaks at all. Well, if then again, I don't know. Things sometimes weirdly speak in Star Wars. But what if they come together and they all decide we can really follow the way without the helmet rule? And all of the armorers group like just takes their helmets off. Like. It'll be beautiful. I can sad emotional music. Not sad, but... Let's think of it this way. Both groups might have to do some concessions. Sure. If Axe's group, because I'm going to call him Axe's group, if his group will follow the letter of the way down to all of the rules, the loyalty, the honesty, the tribalism that the group known as the way follow, with the exception of the helmets, and then the way group removes their helmets, they'd all be equals again. I maybe, guess. Maybe helmets aren't the most important thing. I don't think they're going to stick. I don't think I think that rule is going to go bye-bye. Though that will require Pedro Pascal to do so, a lot more work. Well, he, I'm just saying, they might might be a little stiff, though. I mean, they might just... They might leave them on most of the yeah, time Yeah, anyway. and just take them off sometimes. Yeah, they might kind of, you know, okay, when you're around other Mandalorians in a intimate setting, or just a friendly setting, mm. you can take it off. But when you're out there representing Mandalore, you keep your helmet on. Yeah, those are fine rules. I think so. I think we're going to see something like that. Mm. All right, let's move on here. I've got a little... Interesting tidbit, C2E2 just wrapped up earlier this week, and they had the Clone Wars 15th anniversary panel. Can't be 15 years. Why can't it? Because that's a lot of time since Clone Wars started, and it doesn't feel like it should be that long. Then you'd be wrong. <laughs> Lord Emperor Vader sent me an email. He was at the panel, and they you know, sent me a little information about something that they made note of that I didn't see covered in some of the other news about the panel, which I found interesting. They were asked a question, like, by the audience about the fandom. And instead of giving a generic answer, they kind of went above and beyond defending the fans. Even though they, like, weren't prompted to do that. Just saying that we're, you know, not toxic. Ashley Eckstein and Matt Lanter just defended Star Wars fan. Even uh, Ashley said that the vast majority of Star Wars fans weren't toxic based on her past experiences interacting with them. And as an extension of that... Lanter said that the Star Wars fans were devoted and had strong opinions. They don't hate us. And I kind of like that we got defended by people who are involved in Star Wars. It's kind of rare, feels like. Right, they're so busy saying, if you complain about Star Wars, you're this, you that, and another be, thing. Yeah, you must be a terrible person because you have strong opinions mm -hmm. about something maybe you've loved for decades. So I was really kind of, you know, touched that... No, I think that's awesome. I wish there was more of that. They I wish... stuck up for the fans saying, you know what, we aren't, we aren't toxic. I would have so much more respect for Lucasfilm and Disney if they came out and said, you know what? The vast, vast majority of our fan base are really good people. And, and, yeah, just... and oftentimes the ones who make the most noise are not even Star Wars fans. They're just internet trolls. Well, and what's funny is the reason we get upset is because we care. Exactly. We wouldn't get this upset about things or things not being up to our standards or things being weird. or you know, We wouldn't complain about these things if we didn't love Star Wars. Yes. That's, I mean, I'm not saying that every person who, like I said, there's, there are trolls in the world, mm -hmm. right? And there are people who just want to get you worked up and, and just get you angry or whatever it is. But the vast majority of Star Wars fans, the ones who nitpick or complain or are negative, they just want to see it be good. And you might think it's great, but they might not. And that's okay to have a different opinion. Yeah, so thank you again, Lord Emperor Vader, for bringing this to my yeah, attention. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. I, I, mm -hmm. Like I said, I just wish more often we would see the, you know, Lucasfilm and Disney, or Lucasfilm employees in particular, stand up and say, you know what, let's just let's stop this. Like, they can, they can have an opinion that is negative if they really want to. Yeah. And if you don't like it, guess what? You don't have to listen to them. You can have a different opinion. They also mentioned that they would love to actually cameo in some of this upcoming Star Wars content. I hope they do. I hope Ashley cameos in the Ahsoka series. She kind of said it almost in a roundabout way that she isn't going to be in season one. She mentioned that she would love to cameo in season two. 
Hmm, okay. Yeah, which was like, oh. Come on, Dave. How did you not get her But in that, that could just be throwing her off, you know? Yeah. She might want to surprise us by well, deliberately yeah, throwing can't. us the curveball. But by saying she would hope to be in season two, that almost sounds like, yeah, I don't know. Well, it sounds like uh, she's not knows? in season one. But like I said, that could be deliberately yeah. throwing us off so we're extra excited when like, oh, there she is. Yeah, I, I, she deserves to be in there. Yes. Yes, she does. And Matt Lanter's had his, his live action. I'm sorry, your live action character died, buddy. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the last little bit today. We're going to do some collector's corner. The Mandomania reveals this week were, again, from Book of Boba Fett. That's really funny how that we works. We have Deluxe Black Series Black Chrysanthemum. Is he Deluxe because he actually has muscle now? Yeah, because he's bigger, yes. Because he actually looks he like He actually Black looks like his character now, yeah. Instead of painted Chewbacca? I want a refund for the first one. Yeah, I, I, I literally don't want that bad. thing anymore. It's, I don't want it. No, I mean, it's kind of funny because it looks like, and I could be wrong, but it looks like the the bandolier thing that they put on the original one, which was kind of loose. Looks like it fits perfectly snug on this new Funny one. Funny how that works. Almost as if it's the same bandolier and they intended to make <sighs> it bigger eventually. Eh, thanks, Hasbro. I'm just disappointed because they, they tricked us into spending money again. They That's what they do. And it, uh, Hasbro it actually me means uh, trick in people into spending money on things that will be undone, I guess, or they won't need anymore. <sighs> but they're also giving us from Book of Boba Fett, Vintage Collection, Luke Skywalker, Jedi Academy. Which is just him and his black Jedi which is also again. disappointing because, for one... It doesn't he, even look that it good. It doesn't look very good. For two, the picture they used, he's wearing the, like, little knapsack to carry around Grogu, but he doesn't come no with Grogu. Grogu, nor does he come with the knapsack. Yeah, it's totally... Uh, it just looks... It's a fake view out. It just doesn't look good to me. The face doesn't look quite right. Uh, I excuse that, that a little digital, bit. Under, whatever. Well, a vintage collection is never going to look quite... I mean, it's so small, but... They've done a really good job. I'll give them. I'll give them credit there. The vintage collection faces have come a long way, but they're never perfect. I don't know. It just doesn't look right to me for some reason. It just doesn't look right. I don't know. It's just another. It's I, just another Luke in you know, his black outfit. Yeah, just on a book of Boba Fett card. Even though it should say Mando two point five, I would. I would probably buy it then. That would be hilarious. <sighs> I want a custom version of that figure that says Mandalorian season two point five. You would. But no, I mean, I, the blacker Santa figure looks great. I mean, the price, again, $34. At least, initially, it was announced at, like, $40. Uh, it's deluxe, because it's bigger. Yeah, I know. He actually, finally ate something. Actually, even the bandolier, now that, I know that I'm actually looking at it right now, it looks way better than the original one. Yeah, it does actually look bigger. Now it's got, like, again. more color and stuff on it and details. Well, yeah, it's not the just original was, like, kind of this... goldish yeah, orange. that dull gold. No, this one looks... It looks like it actually might be bigger. But, mm. I mean, the figure itself looks... He's going to have no better. range of motion for that head, but that's fine. Oh, I, I mean, want the broken foot action where he's standing on his <laughs> on this costume all funny. Yes. And so does Kylo, apparently. He came running in here when he said something. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I think that is going to be uh, I think that's gonna be all we got for you this time. So now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you think about any and all of today's news. And do stay tuned. I might be doing some Star Wars Celebration coverage on my channel. I'm sure we'll Don't be. even say might be. You will be. I mean, and when we get in well, this no. crazy trailer, then we can talk about it tomorrow. So make sure you leave sure, comments. Sure, but they actually have to put news out there that is tr I mean, I'm probably going to talk about Lucas it no matter. It's the Lucasfilm panel. They I mean, if there's nothing, I'll complain about there being nothing. See, and if there there's go. something, I'll complain about the something they gave us. That's, you know, yeah. the Thor Skywalker. The whole way. panel, seeing as it says Lucasfilm, it's going to be about Indiana Jones. Yep. And the fact that Willow is probably not getting a season two. No, they've confirmed that, haven't they? Everyone reported want... that they weren't getting one, and then they reported that, well, don't say we're not doing it, because we might still do it. We just don't want to hold the actors down right now while we're thinking. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's a roundabout way of hoping you forget. Dungeons & Dragons movie was, that's how you combine kind of a more modern take or feel or lingo to high fantasy. They take some Take some notes, because Willow just, Willow yeah. butchered it. Willow, Willow put a bunch of teenagers in there, and... Saying they're trendy things and it didn't work. Mm -mm. Dungeons and Dragons figured it out. Mm. At least in my opinion. But anyway, go check the review out for D&D if you want to hear us talk about that more. And for now, leave your comments below about Star Wars and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>